So now in this video, we're going to build the 555 timer in monostable mode. And so what this does is we close the switch. That sets the output high. That lets the capacitor charge. Once the capacitor charges to two-thirds of the power supply voltage, then the capacitor discharges while the output goes low. And it stays that way. This keeps going to ground. So any current that goes through the resistor keeps going to ground until we press the button again. So a pretty simple circuit and uh, a pretty cool circuit. Now the timing is set when you uh, press the button, current starts filling the capacitor. So a higher value resistor will limit the current more, it will take longer, and a larger value capacitor will take uh, longer time. So you use lower values to go quicker, just remember this connects directly to ground while the output is low so use a high enough value resistor to protect that but in case I already uh, did the math here I'm going to use a 1000 ohm resistor and a 1000 microfarad which is the same as 0 0.01 farad 1 uh, millifarad capacitor for the uh, timing right there and it's going to give us a little more than a second when we do the formula so now to begin with, we have a number of things on the board already. First I'll mention this one, it's not on the schematic. This capacitor here, I'm just putting to the power supply rail, it's a 100 microfarad capacitor. Because if I bump the power supply, its voltage uh, changes just briefly. But it's enough to throw off the 555 timer, which is looking at uh, the voltage, messes up the timing. So if I bump the power supply, this will keep the voltage steady long enough. To prevent it from falsely triggering. Now we're gonna look at uh, some jumpers that are already on the board. So when uh, you look at the 555 timer, top left pin is pin number one, then you work your way down two, three, four, that's the end of this, five, five, uh, this uh, integrated circuit. Other ones go longer, but uh, we worked our way down to four, to the bottom, we go across five, six, seven, eight. Pretty straightforward. So eight is to the positive supply, one is to the negative supply. That's how we power it. Pin number four, in the last video, we had this setup where you close the switch, it goes to the negative rail to reset the 555 timer. We don't want to reset the 555 timer in this circuit. And so it will reset itself. And so we just put it directly to the positive rail. That prevents it from doing anything. Now, let's look at the switch, which is also already wired up just to save time. So we have a resistor holding the voltage high at pin 2. It's waiting for a low voltage and uh, to uh, less than one third of the power supply voltage. And so we have this resistor to the positive rail comes to this jumper. It's a 10 kilo ohm resistor pull up resistor going to pin 2 the uh, trigger pin. And uh, Zy Valley doesn't matter current doesn't go in or out. It just looks at the voltage other than some leakage. But uh, when you close the switch, then that current will go to ground, and it's wasted current if you have a lower value resistor. So 10 kilo ohm works pretty well. The switch here, also connected to the jumper, the bottom, top part of the switch, goes to the negative rail. So again, on the uh, schematic here, it's working its way down, but here it's working its way up. Doesn't matter. It's what the connections are. So this is a, called a node right here, as long as these three pin number two the resistor and the switch connect right there and then the other side of the switch goes to ground that side of the switch goes to positive rail lots of makes those connections you're all good now let's do the timing go to the other side of the integrated circuit we again have a node right here so connects pin seven pin six that side of the capacitor and that resistor it's all one conductive area the capacitor is large. I'm going to use a 1000 microfarad. So we're going to start with the resistor. 1000 ohms right there. And uh, going to pin 7, also pin 6 right there. So I could put it to uh, pin 6 if I wanted to. We have uh, the capacitor here, 1000 microfarad. And uh, so that's the same as 1 millifarad. So 1 one thousandth of a farad and 1000 ohms. That often gives you pretty close to one second worth of time and so it's a little bit longer in this circuit 
So we got the negative side to the negative rail to make sure that the capacitor always charges in the right direction. You want that side to be more positive when it charges, that side more negative. And so, well we have power, and uh, power is actually on right now, so current is actually flowing through the resistor from the uh, positive supply right now, and then going to ground. It's keeping the capacitor discharged, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. So now, actually, we got the load right there. Pin number three, that's the output right there. And uh, by the way, six is threshold, pin seven is discharge. So on the uh, website, I got uh, a little drawing of the 555 five, five timer and the name of the pins. So uh, check out the link to the website that I put in the description of the video. So we're gonna take a 220 ohm resistor there, connect it to pin three, and then one spot away from that gray jumper. I don't think that slot wants resistors or pins in them. It was fighting me in the last video too. These are cheap resistors, their pins are a little thin, so they also don't work their way in the board quite as easily sometimes. We got the LED, the line lead, going towards pin three, short lead the cathode, going to the negative rail. So these thin, like these LEDs, they don't get bent up like the resistors. They're more stiff. They, they kind of punch through where these kind of bend. But in any case, I think we're completely done. Yep, there we go. We have about a second worth of time right there. As we saw in the calculation earlier, and so power's already on, but let's get the power supply. There you can see current's flowing. It's flowing through that resistor from the uh, positive rail. You know, we can prove that by just plucking that. And uh, looks like we got some more current flow. I may have damaged this too. I miswired it earlier. But in any case, there you can see the current. Now we got the current with the LED. So it's about a second right there. So what I'm going to do, just real quick, is that pull-up resistor didn't have to be 10,000 ohms, 10 kilo ohms. 1,000 ohms will work too. There we go. This will be the timing. So now we have 10 times the resistance there. And uh, so I got the uh, capacitor in place. And now it's going to stay lit for probably 11 seconds right there. So the calculation's not always spot on perfect, but uh, that's what the calculation is because we have 10 times the resistance charging the capacitor. So that's it for this uh, circuit. And I'm going to do a couple more 555 timer circuits, and then I think transistors. But in any case, I'm going to post some videos on the screen here. And uh, so that's why I'm kind of running this a little longer. Make sure you click like, subscribe, the bell, and all that. And uh, I will see you in the next video.